Hi guys, uh, today we are going to take a look at 2.3, section 2.3 in your notes. Um, we're going to talk about some properties that functions have. Uh, we're going to determine if a function is even or odd. We're going to understand where a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant. Um, and we're going to talk about what are called local minimums and local maximums. Okay, so um, at, the first thing we're going to talk about is whether a function is um, even or odd. And we're going to talk about what that means graphically before we talk about just a function in general. So if you take a look, it says the words even and odd, when you're talking about a function, um, describe the symmetry that that function has. So this first example right here, this is a function that is symmetric to the y-axis. So the y-axis, think of that as a mirror. Um, everything that's over here is also happening over here. So that is an even Function. So an even function is symmetric to the y-axis. And because that y-axis, is, it's, like it's like a mirror, any point over here is going to have a mirror image. So this point that is x units away from the origin and up y, there's going to be a mirror image that is negative x units away from the origin and then up y. And that's what this next line says. It says for every point xy that's on the graph, there's also going to be a negative xy that's also on the graph, okay? So these two x values, one's positive and one's negative, have the same y value. And that's actually what this last thing says. It says if, if a function is even, then f of negative x, so putting a negative x into the function, will give you the exact same answer as putting a positive x into the function. And that's going to come into play here in a second. It's going to be kind of important. So. Um, if, so, for example, if the point negative 1, 3 is on the graph, so you've got some function and you know this point's on the graph, what other point do you absolutely know has to be on the graph? Well, positive 1, 3. Its mirror image across the y-axis would also be on the graph. Okay, so that's an even function. The next is an odd function. So an odd function is symmetric to the origin. And what that means is... Um, it's symmetric, it's like 180 degree rotation. So I'm, if I take my, my paper here and I'm going to flip it upside down, so you leave yours as it is, I'm going to flip mine upside down and you'll notice it still looks the same as the one you're looking at in your notes. Now, not this one, this one got flipped upside down, but this one looks identical. So that's what it means to be um, symmetric to the origin is that it's got like this 180 degree rotation, okay? So, um, so that's what this says. So the top line says that. If, you ha if you're symmetric to the origin, then any point over x up y that's on your graph, there's going to be another point, negative x, negative y, that's also on your graph. So for every point x, y, there is a negative x, negative y, or the opposite of this x and the opposite of that y. Okay, they don't have to be, if they could be positive or negative, and then your answer is just going to be the opposite of whatever I give you. Okay, and then if a function is odd, then putting a negative x into your function will not give you the original function. It'll give you the exact opposite. So f of negative x, when you, if you put a negative x into your function and you simplified it, you'll actually get the exact opposite of the original function that you started with. And again, that's going to be important here in a second. Okay, um, write it underneath. If the point 1, 3, so this is a point that we absolutely know is on the graph. Heck, it could be this point right here, over 1, up 3. Then we also know that negative 1, negative 3 is going to be on the graph as well. Okay? Um, the next part, determining uh, whether a graph is even or odd just by looking at it. So look at these graphs. If you look at this one, you can tell that, I mean, this is like an upside-down parabola. It's obviously uh, symmetric to the y-axis, so this would be an even function. Um, B confuses a lot of students. A lot of people look at that and they go, oh, that's an odd function. Okay, so do me a favor. Take your notes and flip them upside down and then tell me if what you're looking at now looks exactly like what you see on the screen. And the answer is going to be no because this y-intercept right here is going to be below when you flip it upside down and not above. So this is actually neither. This is not even nor is it odd. So that one's neither. And then this one, this is an odd function. It goes through the origin. If you flip it upside down, you're going to get the exact same 
exact same function. Okay, so we've got even, symmetric to the y-axis. Odd is symmetric to the origin. There is not a case where we're symmetric to the x-axis because if you were symmetric to the x-axis, then you wouldn't be a function because you'd be failing the vertical line test. Okay? Now, what if I don't give you a graph? What if I just give you a function? So here's a function. I'm going to give you this function, and I'm going to say, is that function even or odd? Well, here's how it works. Well, and like I said in the boxes above, if I replace the x in a function with negative x, and I end up with the exact same thing that I started with. So all the negatives cancel out, and I just end up with the exact same function. That is an even function. So if I replace the x with a negative x, and I get the same thing that I started with, my function hasn't changed, then that's going to be an even function. If I put a negative x into the function, and I end up with the exact opposite, and you'll see in the example what I mean by that. But if you end up with the exact opposite, from what you started with, then that's an odd function. And I like to link the words odd, opposite, and then graphically symmetric to the origin. Those are the those three O words all go together. Okay, origin, opposite, and odd. Um, but if you put in a negative x and you get the opposite, then you're going to have um, an odd function. And if you put a negative x in and neither one of those happens, just it's different, but it's not the exact opposite and it's not what you started with, then that's going to be neither. Okay, so look at the first example here. If I replace x with negative x, so negative 3, and then negative x to the 4th, and then negative x squared plus 2. Now simplify that. Negative x, any negative to an even power, that negative is going to get canceled out. So negative x to the 4th power is just regular x to the 4th power. So negative 3, and then x to the 4th. Then I have minus negative x squared. Again, that squared is going to cancel the negative, and you're just going to end up with this. And then I've got a plus 2 on the end. That hasn't changed. Well, that is the exact same thing that I started with. All my negatives just kind of canceled out, and I ended up with what I started with. So this is an even function. So replace the x with the negative x and see what you get. Okay, look at the next one. If I replace, so I'm going to take h of negative x. So 2, negative x cubed, minus, and then negative x. All right, so simplify it. Negative x cubed, a negative x times a negative x times another negative x is going to stay negative. You've got an odd number of negative signs, so it's going to stay negative. So when I take this positive 2 times this negative x cubed, I am going to get negative 2x cubed. You can simplify all that. Right here, this negative times that negative are going to cancel each other out. There's no exponent. This is like an exponent of 1. So that's going to stay negative. And then that negative times that negative will give you a positive. So now this is the exact opposite from my original function. In fact, I could factor out a negative sign, 2x cubed minus x, and so now you can see this right here is the exact opposite of the original function that I started with. So this is an odd function. Okay, so why don't you try C? I'm going to pause this for a second, but you try C and see what you get. And then you pause this too, so you don't see the answer. All right, hopefully you had time to pause that in time. Um, so this is what you end up with. Okay, so you put in a negative um, x. The negative x to an odd power will make this whole term stay negative. The negative isn't going to cancel out. Um, but then you also have this minus 1 that doesn't get affected because there's no x there. So look what I've got. I do not have the exact opposite from what I started with. The first term is the opposite, but the last term is the same. So I don't have the opposite. I also don't have the same. So this is going to be neither. Okay. So this is not a even nor an odd function. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the back of your note. So um, we're going to talk about um, what is called increasing, decreasing, and constant. Okay, And we're talking about when a function is increasing, decreasing, or constant based on uh, just looking at the graph. So you've got to understand what these words mean. I know they, they kind of are intuitive, increasing, it's going up. Okay, But increasing means 
your function value is going up. So like your y values or the, the, the graphs going up as your x values are also going up. So when we talk about these three things, what we're talking about as, as you move from left to right. So as I go from left to right, my x values are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They're negative, they're less negative, less negative, going up and up and up, okay? So our answers, when it says where, so where is my graph increasing? We're talking about an interval. So from this x value to this x value, Every time my x's get, big, get bigger in this little increment of time, my graph keeps going up. So if you look down here, I mean, as I go, my graph starts here and it goes up. So this whole time my graph is increasing. So this is a section where my graph is increasing. The interval where it is increasing is from negative 3 to negative 2. So from negative 3 to negative 2. These are the x values where my y values are going up, 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 okay? So from negative 3 to negative 2. So your answer, when you're talking about an interval, you're talking about x values, okay? So then there's this flat part where the graph is constant. So the function values are equal all along this little section right here. So again, where is it constant? Well, it starts at negative 2. And then this whole time until you get to zero. So it's constant from negative two to zero. Now, whenever we answer these, we always use parentheses. So like if you go back and look at the first one, where's my graph increasing? It's not increasing at negative three. It's increasing once you move from negative three. So once you go from an X value of negative three to an X value of negative 2.99, that gra your graph's gonna go up a little bit. So we don't, we don't include the endpoints when we're talking about these, okay? Um, then what's my graph do? Well, it increases again from, from this point, 0, 1, to this point, 2, 2. So the interval is 0, 2. So it is increasing, so it's increasing on this interval, and then it's also increasing on the, on the interval from 0 to 2. So an x value of 0, up to the x value of 2 and all the little x's in between, my graph is going up, and then my graph is decreasing from, so again, we're only looking at the x values, from 2, and then it keeps going, going, going. So from 2, 2, so what do you think? What's the x value that I'm going to end this with? Be careful. It's very easy to look at that graph going down and go, oh, this graph's going to negative infinity. Well, that's the y value. The x value, it's going to infinity. Okay, this is an x value of 2. This is an x value of 3. x value of 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It's going to positive infinity. Okay, so those are our intervals where our graph is either increasing, decreasing, or constant. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to talk about, and we're going to talk about the increasing, decreasing a little bit more. Um, what are called local maximums or local minimums? And they are exactly what you think they are. It's either a height, so this is a local maximum. It's either a high point in your graph. It does not have to be the absolute highest point possible in your graph. Your graph may be going to positive infinity, so there is no absolute maximum. But if there's like this little crest, this little hill where your graph goes up and then goes back down, um, the definition of a local maximum is that the function values on either side of you are smaller than your function value, okay? So that's what this is. This is a high point. This, if this is um, an, a, an x value of c, this is the function value f of c, and that function value is bigger than the function values on either side, okay? So that is a, a local maximum. We say that the maximum if it says, um, like, at what x values is there a maximum, then you just need the x value. Um, if it asks what is the local maximum, then they're asking for the y value. If you give me the ordered pair, if you tell me both, I'm okay with that as well. But they're usually going to say what is, um, where does the maximum occur? That's your x value, where it occurs. So your x is where there's a local maximum, and the function value 
is what the, the maximum is. So this graph has a maximum of 4, okay? So of 4, so that would be the maximum value, okay? And then a local minimum is a low point, okay? So let's take a look at this example on the bottom. So it says, at what values of x, if any, does f have a local maximum? Well, right here, okay? So when x equals 1, we have a local maximum, and that's it. And then it says, what are the local maxima? This right here is the plural of maximum, okay? So it's not maximums, and if you ever hear me say that, don't laugh at me, okay? I'm just making up English words, okay? Maxima is what it really is. So you'll see that they, they didn't say what is, they said what are the local maximum. Well, there's only one, okay? But that maximum is two. If you were to say to me, the local maximum is one, two, I'm not going to have a problem with that, okay? But this is where the maximum's at, and that is the value of the, lax of the local maximum, okay? At what values do we have a local minimum? Well, we have this low point here, so when x equals negative 1, but then also right here when x equals 3, there's this low point. So we have two local minimums. That's okay. It's just local, okay? This is the absolute minimum, but that's not what we're talking about. We're just talking about this little local area where there's a dip in the graph. What are the local minimum? Well, we'd have 1 and 0. Okay, or again, you could write those as ordered pairs, the negative 1, 1, and 3, 0, and I would take that as well. Okay, now, um, going back to what we talked at the top, given this graph, list the intervals on which f is increasing. Okay, so increasing means as I'm moving from left to right. So, this part of the graph right here, even though we see this arrow pointing up, the graph is not increasing there. It's actually decreasing. As we move from left to right, the graph is decreasing. Then it turns. It hits that local minimum. It turns and then starts increasing. It hits this little local maximum, turns again and decreases. And then finally it increases forever and ever and ever. So, Intervals. We're talking about what x values. So where is the graph increasing? It increases from here to here. So from negative 1 to positive 1. Those x values, the graph goes up as we move. And then also from 3 to infinity. Where is the graph decreasing? So again, as you move from left to right. So from this, this is negative infinity. I know it's going up. It looks like it's going up, but it's also going to the left. So if you're talking about an x value, it is negative infinity to negative 1. And then from, so then it increases, and then it decreases again from 1 to 3. All right, so take a look at your worksheet. Let me know if you have any questions, and good luck.